Hello everyone. Imagine you travel with blood cells to a quivering atrial chamber. You find the blood flow becomes turbulent and the clots formed. These clots then break off, travel and lodge to the brain arteries. This is how AFib causes ischemic stroke. For decades, warfarin has been the only oral blood thinner available to prevent stroke in this population. However, Warfarin has a narrow therapeutic range, high risk of bleeding, and broad drug interactions. Only half of all patients in need can take warfarin because of these limitations. Fortunately, a group of new oral blood thinners named NOACs are now available in Canada. The question is, are those NOACs as effective as warfarin in stroke prevention? Are they safe to use? This question is important because the answer can guide the clinical practice. I put this question into the pickle format and did a thorough research. Five systematic reviews were identified and critically appraised. The result shows that in patients with non valvular AFib, NOACs are as effective as warfarin in stroke prevention with a lower risk of uh, intracranial hemorrhage. This evidence indicates that NOACs should be the first line of choice in this population. In Canada, almost one third of patients should receive NOACs are still on warfarin. This gap requires to continue the next step of action cycle. After carefully assessing my local context, the algorithm for oral anticoagulant therapy in current AFib clinical practice guideline will be adapted and used in my hospital. All stakeholders will be involved in and collaborate together in my action plan. The barriers to implement the guideline at the individual level include the lack of knowledge, negative attitudes and external factors. At the organizational level, the potential barriers can be the lack of the support and the lack of the fence. To overcome the barriers at the individual level, I choose a two-hour interactive education plus audit and the feedback at the multifaceted interventions to improve healthcare providers' knowledge and change their attitudes. The goal of my intervention is to achieve the AFib guideline adherence rate of 90% in one year. The incidence of stroke as well as major bleed will be used to evaluate patient's outcome. Audit and feedback plus interviews and service will be used to monitor and sustain the knowledge use. However, if further new evidence requires the change of the clinical practice, then this knowledge to action process cycle will be started over again. Thank you for your time.